In this video, we're going to look at the temperature profiles in developing and fully developed pipe flow. Consider a plug flow entering a pipe. As the flow enters the pipe, we'll see that the no-slip condition at the wall means that we have a region where the velocity is increasing from zero up to a value which is greater than the inlet value in order to conserve mass. And as the flow continues down the pipe, that region will grow and the center line velocity will increase until ultimately we reach a fully developed condition where the profile is no longer changing with distance along the pipe. Of course, we can imagine a boundary there covering this region, which once we reach the fully developed region, uh, the boundary layers have merged from all the walls in the pipe. So the, this entrance region is where we have developing flow, and once the developing flow has developed, we are in the fully developed flow regime. Now let's consider the temperature profiles when we have that flow situation. Now we'll have a thermal boundary there, which we'll meet, and we'll have a different thermal development length. But when, we, when the first flow first enters, we have the temperature at the inlet Ti, and the surface of this pipe is at some temperature which is greater than Ti. And that means that in any given section here, we will have the temperature decreasing out to a region where the temperature is still at that inlet value and it hasn't felt the effect of these walls yet. See, this is where we're taking our profile, and so this line corresponds to where the temperature has not changed from the inlet value. As we progress further into the pipe, this region will cover more of the pipe. Now let's consider the energy transfer in our pipe. This convective flow that's coming into our pipe is carrying energy in convectively, and that energy that's coming in is given by the mass flow rate times Cp times the temperature at the inlet. The Ti here is a constant value, and so this is simply m dot Cp times Ti. At the outlet, where the flow is coming out, we now have a temperature distribution, and so we need to use the proper average at the outlet in order to calculate the energy going out. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the energy going out is, with that proper average temperature, it's the mass flow rate times the specific heat, that's our energy out. The difference between what's carried out had to come in through the walls of the pipe. And that difference then is going to be equal to the mass flow rate times the specific heat times that average temperature at the outlet minus the temperature at the inlet. Now we'll call that difference, the inlet it's a constant value, but in general, we want to use the correct average value. And we'll call that the mixed mean temperature. So this can be written as that heat transfer into the pipe is equal to the mass flow rate times the specific heat times the mixed mean temperature at the outlet minus the mixed mean temperature at the inlet. Now, what is this mixed mean temperature? If we think about any given cross-section, so I could draw any given cross-section, and I want to know what the mixed mean temperature is, what I want to do is imagine that I took all of the fluid at this one section and I stirred it completely and mixed it such that it was all at one uniform temperature. What would that uniform temperature be? Well, to calculate that mathematically, I want the total energy and the flow at that cross section, m dot times Cp times the mixed mean temperature that I'm looking for, to be equal to the integrated value of the energy in that. So if I integrate over my cross sectional area, the mass flow rate, rho, times u, the velocity, the local velocity and my velocity profile across this section, times Cp, times the local temperature in my cross section, integrated over the cross sectional area, this will also be the total energy in the flow. And so I can solve for the mixed mean temperature just by dividing through by m dot Cp, and I have an expression for this temperature which represents the value of the 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 single temperature that it would be if I mixed the flow in any given one cross-section. So that's the average temperature if the fluid of the cross-section is perfectly mixed. And this is going to be a very important parameter in convective heat transfer and internal flows. As you can see, it determines the heat transfer into or out of that pipe. Okay, now let's think about this idea of a fully developed temperature profile. Now, obviously, if we have heat transfer coming into this pipe, we are constantly going to be heating this fluid, and so the temperature should always be increasing as long as we have heat transfer into the pipe. Well, that doesn't really make sense when talking about a fully developed temperature profile. So, what do we mean when we say a fully developed temperature profile? Of course, we have to look at a non-dimensional temperature. What we're going to do is take the temperature at the surface, which may or may not be a function of x, we may be changing that surface temperature as we increase. And our temperature distribution, Tr of x for our circular pipe, 
this temperature distribution here, for example, divided by the maximum temperature dif difference at that location, the temperature at the surface, minus the mixed mean temperature at this cross section. Well, this will be the non-dimensional temperature, and what we mean by a fully developed temperature profile is that this non-dimensional temperature doesn't change with time. That means that maybe we have the surface temperature changing with time. That means that we may have the surface temperature changing with position along our pipe, but correspondingly, we'll have the heat transfer into there raising the mean temperature such that this non-dimensional temperature difference at a given cross-section is equal to zero. And that's what a fully developed temperature profile means. Let's think about this. If the non-dimensional temperature profile is not changing with location, remember what the non-dimensional temperature profile, what the non-dimensional temperature gradient at a wall means in convective heat transfer. The non-dimensional temperature profile at the wall is by definition the Nusselt number. In the fully developed region, if we have a non-dimensional temperature which is not changing with position, that means the Nusselt number will not be a function of position. The Nusselt number will be a constant value in our fully developed uh, temperature region of our pipe, and that will be very useful going forward. Now let's think about two different conditions. Let's think about the case when we have a constant surface temperature. So if I impose a constant surface temperature, which isn't changing, and I introduce fluid, which is cooler than that, I'm going to get these developing uh, temperature profiles, and then I'll reach my fully developed region down here. Now, of course, the, the wall is warmer than the fluid, so I'm constantly adding energy to this flow. So the temperature of the flow, the mixed mean temperature of the flow, is going to increase. As it increases, of course, the driving force for heat transfer from that constant wall surface temperature to the flow is going to, de is going to decrease. And so the rate of heat transfer is going to decrease. And I'll see this slope constantly decreasing. And of course, we would need an infinite length of pipe for the, the mixed mean temperature at the end to be equal to Ts. So we'll always see this exponential decay of the difference in temperature when the surface temperature is constant. Now what does that mean? It means the heat flux is changing at each one of these locations. And therefore, our non-dimensional temperature profile has to look different. Perhaps at this location it looks like this. But if the heat flux is decreasing because this temperature difference is decreasing, that slope at the wall has to be decreasing. So the gradient at the wall is changing, but of course we have a fully developed condition the non-dimensional temperature profile is still not changing, even though the dimensional temperature profile is changing. Another boundary condition we might have is that of a constant surface heat flux. If we have a constant surface heat flux, then we're putting in a constant amount of energy into this flow at every single location in the pipe. And that means that the average temper in the temperature in the pipe has to increase linearly, always, because we're putting in the same amount of energy. Of course, when the temperature profiles are developing, we have larger gradients than when we reach that fully developed temperature region. And so we'll have a higher rate of heat transfer in that region until we reach the fully developed temperature profiles, and then we'll see that the difference between the surface temperature and the mean temperature is everywhere a constant.